So first, I would like to thank Professor Xin Yan Dong for inviting me and giving me a chance to to give uh, to speak at this Future Science uh, Symposium. Today, I will present a talk on the advancement of uh, processing aging technologies and their application in crop improvement. Uh, so as everyone here knows that DNA is a, is a building block to all, uh, all of life. So changes in DNA uh, may affect the, the resulting protein which, have, uh, which change the physical property of, of living cell. So however, during the process of DNA replication, some mistakes can cause some uh, extremely devastating diseases. As you can see here, some genetic diseases are caused just by a few letter differences. DNA changes or DNA sequence changes are sometimes required in or designed in uh, many applications. Here, example, in crop breeding, breeders relies on these genetic changes that accumulate over years to breed or to create a new and desired variety. So here you can see the modern varieties of corn and uh, banana, they look vastly different from their ancestral um, looks. So the, the grand question to the field of genome editing is, how we can precisely or accurately to edit a gene of interest, uh, you know, among a vast genome. So here, a human genome is a three billion uh, base, um, basis long, where this weight genome is five times of that. So then it's very critical to answer the question how to precisely to find this uh, target site without affecting the other locations. So the field of genome editing is not new. Over the past 30 years, we have seen many developed tools that can edit uh, DNA sequences. So here, like uh, meganucleases, zinc finger nucleases, and the talon, they are, they are like three of the notable examples so, however, they all rely on this direct or strict protein DNA uh, bonding interactions to target a sequence of DNA. So, to target a new sequence of DNA, uh, one would have to extensively engineer and uh, optimize this uh, protein complex. So, CRISPR technologies have advanced the development of uh, the field of genome editing as its first uh, um, a demonstration as a gene uh, editing tool since uh, in 2012. So then the CRISPR, uh, the CRISPR Cas9 uh, systems are like uh, fundamentally comprised of a Cas9 um, nucleus directed to the target site by a single guide RNA molecular. So this single guide RNA molecular serves as a G, uh, GPS function to direct this uh, uh, nuclear protein to the target site. A simple, very simple uh, sequence changes in this guide RNA will uh, enable redirecting this nuclear protein to a new target of site. It's because of that, then this technology was awarded um, Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2012 to um, Jennifer Doudna and, uh, and uh, Emanuela Chavantier. So we need to, when we look at what CRISPR system do, we found on the, on the right, we found that the CRISPR first generate a double strand break. So upon recognition of the double strand break, the cell 
rapidly attempts to repair the brick. Although one can uh, introduce a template to direct a more precise outcome, this uh, occurs uh, like rarely in most cells. So then on the other hand, so this repair at the double strand brick will undergo a process called the non-homologous and joining, which results in this formation of some random DNA or small DNA insertions or divisions, which ultimately um, uh, knock out the gene. So then the first generation of CRISPR-Cas9 are very good or great at performing gene knockout. So gene knockout are very, are very important also in plant breeding. So the normal or the, the current molecular method to breed for disease resistance rely on a resistant gene, R gene. So R gene mediated the resistant is uh, R gene is very uh, often race, uh, race specific. So then pathogens can uh, all, uh, easily overcome this resistance by introducing some mutations in fungus. And often we need to, or people need to uh, trans, uh, introduce our gene from one variety to another, which uh, through this transgenesis or crossbreeding method, which takes a lot of time. So alternatively, susceptibility gene, S gene, is, um, is an endogenous gene in plant cells that pathogen leverages to infect plant cell. So disturbing or engineering S gene uh, enables this uh, broad uh, spectrum and durable resistance. So polymutal disease is a major disease affecting weight yield worldwide. And the polymutal disease is also one of the top three uh, weight diseases uh, in China. So currently, people use chemical fungicide to kill this polymutal fungus. However, this method is not sustainable and it's, uh, it's harmful for farmers and the consumers. The MLO gene is a very well-known S gene, and this gene is very conserved, you can see, in barley or arabidopsis, tomato, and the pea. When knocking out this gene in these three uh, plant species, so the plant showed uh, resistance to polymutal. So in weight, there are three copies of MLO gene um, uh, across this, uh, across this uh, uh, four or three genome of weight. So in 2014, my group, in collaboration with the others, used Thailand technology to knock out three copies of this gene, and we demonstrate that this uh, uh, triple mutant showed robust resistance to polymutal disease. Um, Okay, one slide missed. But anyway, so when we grow this triple mutant in the, in the field, we noticed that the triple mutant showed some uh, decreased yield while producing, a, uh, while producing additional ML mutant. We identified an interesting mutant called R32. R32 showed a very normal plant height and we enhanced the yield. So since 2014, we used nearly 80 years to uncover this, uh, um, uh, the, the biological basis behind this phenotype. Oh, sorry. So here we found in R32, there existed a 304 kilo base pair uh, large deletion. So the deletion is bordered by MLOB1 and also by a newly identified gene or home lock of MLO, we call it MLOX. 
Through comparative studies, we found a gene was upregulated just the upstream of this deletion region. The gene is TMT3B. So this gene did not express in this well-type plant. So this gene is a toner plus monosaccharide transporter. So previous, previous study showed that all expressing this gene in Azorbidopsis increased green yield. So then through many study, we found that in wild type plant, the transcription of this TMT3B was depressed by this, uh, the presence of this uh, depressive histone mark S3K27 tree methylation and also an inhibitory chromatin loop. While in R32, this large deletion abolishes this epigenetic depression, thus resulting in the transcription increase of TMT3B. So in summary, R32 is, com is uh, comprised of four simultaneous DNA double-strand breaks, which result in three genes knockout and one gene upregulation, yielding this decreased uh, disease resistant and high yielding weight. So we certainly want to introduce this R32 in more uh, weight germplasms. So therefore we use genome editing, we introduce the uh, I think something wrong with my slide, but okay. <sighs> okay. So we introduced this uh, um, um, genotype through uh, genome editing, and we used the <laughs> and we used the, this uh, CRISPR DNA or RNP uh, this uh, protein complex directly with the two guide RNAs, and we were able to re regenerate this transgene free and uh, um, edited the plants in two to three. Um, month. So then, in conclusion, we developed a new method which we use genome editing to, to breed for this weight uh, plants with a robust, durable, uh, resistant, and enhanced crop yield. So although uh, powerful, it's uh, gene editing powerful in itself, but still it's very much limited by the, by, the, by the types of trees they can directly affect. And the single nucleotide polymorphisms are the most prevalent in treating genetic diseases and being associated with plant trees. So here from this figure you can see nearly 50% of the genetic, of the human genetic vari variants associated with disease is caused by a single nucleotide chains. And also more than 40 foreign DNA SNPs are, so are related to 34 traits in rice. So then we need to develop some tool which can edit small DNA changes precisely and efficiently. So base editors originally developed by Davilius Group are the technology that can change one base at one time. So the cytosine base editor and the adenosine base editor are the two uh, primary base editors. So they undergo this uh, either uh, cytosine um, deamination reaction or adenosine deamination reaction to yield uroso or inosine intermediate and ultimately uh, convert to thymine or uh, uh, guanine. So my group first uh, generated this first plant-based editors by optimizing this cytosine based editor, and we found this base editor is limited in narrow deamination window and also uh, some a certain context and with uh, overall a lower DNA editing efficiency. So we analyzed or we screened many other different uh, deaminases and found that human APOVAC3B or 3A is the, um, 
when we use this, uh, the use of this uh, human FFX3B can greatly enhance this editing efficiency and uh, across different plant, uh, different uh, plant species. And our A3A PBE performed about like 11 fold better in potato and 13 fold better in rice and wheat. And uh, the other groups continue to demonstrate that this A3A base editor worked better than the first generation. However, editing was also limited in, in soybean. So to, to, to develop more base editors, so we developed a method on using this massively power line uh, AI assistant uh, structure prediction and uh, this uh, similarity uh, alignment to identify proteins with some uh, designed property. So when we, applied, uh, when we applied this method in the family of this uh, deaminates of proteins, we found that the structure-based uh, clustering of protein, the method are more clear and concise than the traditional sequence-based uh, clustering method. So through a high throughput deamination profiling assay, we found this newly discovered uh, editor uh, deaminases uh, showed some very unique uh, property when used as base editor. So here you can see they have very different uh, um, editing efficiency and a very different, uh, uh, what's that called, uh, motive preferences. So also, we were excited to find that some base editors showed a very low of target activity. So through this um, orthogonal R-loop assay that my group and the other developed, we found that like uh, SDD6 showed the best on to off target uh, ratio. So we further want to engineer all these space editors. So we found that we noticed that this, uh, in addition to this co-domain of the amnes, there are some, there are some um, additional loops, which seems, which didn't seem to be related with the co-activity. So with the help of AI uh, structure prediction again, we truncated this uh, base editor, or uh, the eminence. And we were ex very excited to find that the truncated version had a similar or even better editing efficiency compared to the old one. So we're very excited to say that we could use, uh, using this uh, truncated version, actually it's uh, a newly uh, created uh, um, protein for, for this uh, uh, base editing. So then we applied this newly discovered um, base editor in soybean, and we used the mini SDD7. And you can see this uh, new base editor increased the uh, efficiency much more than the old version. And then we also um, delivered the new uh, base editor and also the old version to generate this, uh, or to regenerate this soybean transgenic plant. So across all, or like four power line experiments, we could, um, we see the old version A3A did not yield any uh, edited plant, while this uh, uh, newly uh, discovered base editor really gave or produced a lot um, edited plants with uh, you know, when we target the herbicide gene. So in addition to, use, to, to using base editor to make base change or very specific uh, variant, we were also one of the uh, first group to use this base editor as great metagenesis editors. So we fused a synthesis and a um, to a fusion protein to in order to make this C2T and the A2G at one target. So we, use, well, we wanted to use this STEM system to explore new biology. 
So here's an example. So we use a stem to explore endogenous mutations in order to identify some new herbicide resistant target site. So we target the ACC gene. ACC is a, is a key uh, enzyme in lipid biosynthesis, and its CT domain is the strange. Its CT domain is a, is a target of herbicide. So we focus this uh, CT domain and design 200 sgRNAs, and uh, then we could see. We grouped, transformed them into agrobacteria and group agrobacteria and delivered them into a rice uh, chili to yield a library of seedling. Upon this uh, herbicide uh, spring, we identified some, um, some variant. So when genotyping this uh, edited plant, we found 92% of the sgRNA uh, has been successfully introduced into the plants and uh, yielding or results in 209 of 400 animal ashes have been changed to new identity. Oh, something wrong here. Okay, so this, uh, then I, I'm trying to say there are you have to imagine this is a slide. So there are two groups. We identified the two uh, different uh, um, mutations. One mutation has been repopulated previously, and the other one is a novel target we found, which herbicide is resistant. I don't know what happened here. So then, <clears throat> so then base editing we just mentioned is super rare and make one base change. However, it is limited by the base change types. So therefore, uh, in, 19, uh, in 2019, WLU's group developed this, uh, or pioneered the development of this prime editing that enables the creation of 12 base changes or base substitutions. And also, the system enables the precise small DNA uh, insertions and the deletions. So when we first uh, generate this uh, prime editor system in plant, we found that the efficiency of prime editors varied uh, widely across uh, target loci and also different cell types. And the efficiency is strongly affected by the design of the PEG RNA. So to maximize the, 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 the utility of this plant prime editing, we made some improvement. And uh, firstly, we screened many PEGRE designs, and we found designing primer bonding site with a melting temperature of 30 degrees leads to optimal performance in rest and the different temperature or different melting temperature work best for different plant species. And we were also one of the first, or we were the first, to demonstrate that using dual PEG RNA in trans, encoding the same address, further enhanced PE efficiency. So we, we, when we combined these two strategies, we found the optimized dual PEG RNA boosted the PE efficiency from from 2.9 fold to 17.4 fold. So we further optimize this system by changing by this, uh, no, the next we engineered this Cas9 nickase transposes fusion protein by truncating this RNAs H and also insertion an RNA viral nuclear capsid. Uh, to, to generate this EPPE system. And uh, from this figure, you can see this EPP system enhanced the prime editing uh, on average 5.8 fold in plants. So using EPPE system, we were able, oh, actually we generated a rice mutant uh, in those high level of resistance to a broad, uh, a broad spectrum of herbicide. So finally, 
we would like to, or we wonder if we could use this precise genome editing to find or to turn protein expression levels. So here we say in about like 50% of eukaryotic, eukaryotic genes, they, they are regions, there are some they are regions called upstream open reading frame. And this upstream of an open reading frame, URF, affects the translation of this primary open reading frame, which uh, like all express the target gene. So we wonder, or we hypothesize by uh, making change on this uh, URF, we may help, we may uh, enable this uh, um, gene uh, like a uh, or expression. So, uh, let, uh, vitamin C is this uh, uh, valuable nutrients in lettuce. So, GDP1 encodes a vitamin C biosynthesis enzyme in lettuce. So, then indeed, some small edits in this URF of GDP1 enabled increased vitamin C level in lettuce uh, uh, leaves. So further, this uh, BZ enable, enables sucrose-induced expression of translation in strawberry, which affects the overall uh, sweetness in strawberry. So we introduced or we generated a variety of uh, allele by, um, by using a base editor. And here you can see this edited strawberry um, inhabited increased uh, uh, sugar in, yeah. So then indeed, by precisely changing or modifying URF, we are able to upregulate gene expression. So then we wonder if we could uh, downregulate the gene expression by modifying URF. So we first attempt to use base and prime editing to generate the novel URF, we are creating upstream start codon ATG, uh, ATG uh, in hopes to slowing down this protein expression. And then we further hypothesized that if we could enhance this uh, inhibitory activity by extending endogenous URF, we are mutating existing stop codon. So then we so the, that's a target gene, and we generated uh, a, a, ver a variety of, uh, of this uh, allele by making some changes in this uh, five primer UTR of uh, rice DLT, and the, the engineered URF reduced this uh, lack activity progressively. And uh, very excitingly, we found the plant heights and the telom numbers of the mutants decrease progressively consistent with the, with the corresponding reduction in, in rest DLT level seen in the transient repro system. So with all this small DNA editing method on hand, we're wondering if we could work on a method which can insert a large DNA um, fragment. So then we designed or we combine prime editing and the recombinant system to generate prime root. So in prime root, we could, uh, in, we could uh, uh, insert this recombinant site uh, in which them serve as a, as a substrate for uh, recombinants. And uh, here is an example. Then we inserted this 4.9 KB DNA sequence uh, which are uh, encoding this peak MRR, which um, uh, confers rest resistance to rest uh, blast disease. And uh, here is this demonstrate that when we successfully inserted the gene at the genomic herbicide, we see this uh, resistant phenotype. So I hope the method uh, demonstrated above illustrates the breadth of this genome editing technologies. Uh, developed over the past 10 years, and also some examples 
and I am excited to see where this genome editing will, will advance and I hope to see more commercial products in enter to market. Okay, so then finally I would like to thank the people in my lab who work very hard for all the work I saw in today and I'd like to thank the, our great, uh, great collaborators and also the uh, this uh, funding agencies. Thank you for your listening. <laughs>